Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel. Let us cry to Emmanuel. Let us cry to Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let us cry to Emmanuel. Let us draw near to Emmanuel. Let us draw near to Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let us draw near to Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel. Let us worship Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, let us worship Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Father, I want to thank you because of our Sunday service today online. As a church, we are just glorifying you and saying that your name is Emmanuel, God together with us. God together with us. Even during this time that the clouds of this nation are too heavy with the darkness, your name is Emmanuel. You are together with us. You are together with us as a church. You are together with us as a nation. You are together with us even in this platform and I want to bless you. Everyone that is under the influence of my voice, Jesus is together with you. Emmanuel is together with you. And Father, I want to thank you and I want to bless you even as we start our Sunday service today. Bless my viewers, bless my members online and bless them as they listen to me and let grace reign in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome on board, good people. Welcome on board, my people. 
how have your week been i have been praying for you my week have been a blessing and i'm still confessing that jesus is my personal savior and jesus is my king in this time and forever amen now we have been learning about the power of the holy spirit and we are coming very very far from very very far we started by touching on who is the holy spirit and who is the godhead who is the god the body and also the holy spirit who he is and we have talked a lot a lot and i pray that every teachings that i'm teaching you they are not disappearing they are not being blown by the wind but they are very effective and they are very fruitful in your life because this is what you need to become supernatural in Jesus name i've been telling you that uh, that uh, uh, life is spiritual and life will always be spiritual no matter what kind and where you are coming from even if you are from the other kingdom now life is spiritual it is spiritual positively negatively life is spiritual and us in this program us in this church the online church i believe and i'm praying that because your life is spiritual that this media this grace that i carry shall affect or effect or touch your spirit life so that your life will be better every day amen now we have learned about quite a lot and this time we have uh, we we are learning quite a lot and this time i've been teaching you about the ministry of the holy spirit because we started with the ministry of the holy spirit we started part 1 how jesus was affected positively by the spirit of god by the ministry of the holy spirit in his life and that is where he started doing exploits now we went to part 2 ministry of the holy spirit part 2 and this is our lives how will the holy spirit affect you in your life i've talked about that now we are dealing with the holy spirit as the baptism as the baptism uh, the baptism of the holy spirit and we said that number one for apple it is jesus who is the baptizer and i told you about number a what you find in things that you need to know and we said number one the holy spirit the baptism of the holy spirit it is a promise to every one of us that is in the kingdom of god number two we said it is a new birth the baptism of the holy spirit is a new birth amen number three we said it is a, it, it is it, it the baptism of the holy spirit it is power it is power that reinforces us to be what god has called us in other words it becomes a power when you are baptized it becomes a power you receive power from on high it is re- reinforcement now last sunday we dealt with i think it was last sunday last sunday we dealt with the b which is for banana uh, jesus is the baptizer and i taught you how jesus baptizes amen we said that jesus is the baptizer Number 2 we said that he will baptize you with the fire and with the holy ghost amen those are the tools that he will use now today i want us to look for at c for cow c for cow what is the holy ghost baptism this is things that you need to know about the holy spirit baptism the first one i've told you things for you to know what it is the second one which is for banana what it is and who baptizes now we have learned about what it is and the baptizer and now today i want us to look at what is the holy ghost baptism what is this thing that apostle damaris is talking about what is this that apostle damaris is saying that it is important to be baptized what is this that is being called baptism and what is this what happens when i'm baptized so what are the benefits what will happen to me so that's what i want us to look at number c for cow what is holy ghost baptism number 1 the holy ghost baptism is assigned to all believers now when you go to matthew chapter 6 it is 16 it is assigned to all believers baptism of the holy spirit it is a sign in fact let's go to mark 
I love Mark. I prefer Mark. All of them is good. But these ones, I call them spiritual credentials. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. We go to Mark chapter 16 and verses 17. So it is a sign to all believers. So when this thing happened, number one, it is a sign to you as a person. Number two, it is a sign to those that you are ministering to. And number three, it is a sign that there is God in this commission. Amen. Now the Bible says that chapter 16, Mark and verses 17, I call them spiritual credentials. Spiritual credentials, I call them spiritual credentials. These are signs to all believers. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. If in the name of Jesus you are casting out devil and it is submitting to you and the person is delivered, that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You are already enforced, reinforced. You are already empowered. You are already baptized. You are casting it out. It's just living. Number two, they shall speak with new tongues. Speaking in tongues is the baptism of now, there is an example I will, I will always give about um, God's general and especially uh, Catherine Kuhlman. There is nowhere Catherine Kuhlman spoke in tongues. <laughs> I've read the book, I've read about her story, but there is nowhere she spoke in tongues. And if there is, I don't know. I am speaking what I know. And that one, and yes, she was full of the Holy Ghost. She was speaking, you know, she was, miracles were happening. She was speaking about the Holy Spirit. She was speaking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But some of these things, if you don't speak in tongues, there is a big danger. When you speak in tongues, there is a level tongues will take you in the spirit realm. There is a language, angels speak in different languages. There are times my angels will speak to me in a language I will understand. There are times they will speak to me in my English, sometimes Kikuyu. They can speak even in Kiswahili. These are supernatural beings. They speak even to Maasai. Do, what do you expect them to speak to Maasai in English? No. If it, a Maasai doesn't know or an old woman does not know English, they will speak to her in that language. You see? And there are times they don't want me to know their communication. There is a language they speak. I cannot talk it because I don't know it. But if I hear it, I will know that is an angel speaking because they have a language. I cannot explain. But I, <laughs> they talk and I will not catch. I will not get anything. And sometimes they will laugh because I'm getting nothing. And when I ask what they are saying, they will say that is our business. That is us. That is our secret. You know, that is our explanation. This is our communication. Anyway, sorry, but one day I'll speak about angels and you will understand. And the Bible says that they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, they shall take up serpents. Of course, you can take a serpent with your hand. It will not bite you. Yes. And sometimes it can be spiritual. You hold, you know, and you kick it, you destroy it. It will not bite you because fire is all over you. I can give examples on that. I can give examples of that. One person I know in my house was trying to do some firewood for me to bath. And uh, when she was taking the firewood to go light, she held a, a, a something cold. And she's like, this firewood is not dry. It is very cold. I love firewood water. I love, of course, I have shower, but I prefer the much water, you know. And uh, she was, you know, holding. And she was surprised it was a snake. It had been paralyzed. And she ran away screaming. But the snake was not moving. In fact, they called. We were in church. And when they called, I sent some protocol to come. And they, they, they found the snake and killed it. Where it was, it was still there. It was breathing, yes. It was not dead, but it was paralyzed to stay there, yes. So that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The angels were at work. And the Bible says that, And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. How many times have you taken poison? One time, a lady in church, by, uh, by that time she was a chair lady in church, she came and testified to me and said, Mom, I am so shocked. I said, what is it? She said, somebody that I know made some food for me and put rat rat, put poison in my food. And this person was waiting for me to die. 
But in the morning I woke up, I was okay. And she's like, why is this woman not dying? So you shout, it will depend with the grace. What has covered you? Who has covered you, my friend? Who has covered you? That woman is not very spiritual, but the covering, it is baptized. There is power in that. Okay, I think I'm telling you so many personal testimonies, but they are very good because they have testified even in church. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. These are called spiritual credentials. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, it is a sign to the believers. So when they lay hands on the sick, they are healed. These are spiritual credentials. Number two, speaking unto God. Speaking unto God. Now we go to 1 Corinthians. Speaking unto God. You speak to God, he replies. You are baptized. My friend, these are things we take for granted, but they mean a lot. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I hope I'm getting it. Chapter 4 and verses 2. 1 Corinthians. Oh, I'm in 2 Corinthians. No wonder that's why I'm not finding it. Okay. Second, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. First, uh, chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. When you are found faithful, you enjoy the mysteries. Verse 1, let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be faithful. But, if, but with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of her. So verse 2, the Bible says, Moreover, it is required in steward that you may be found faithful. When you are faithful, God will speak to you. When we go to second to the same one, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verses 2 also, this is accurate also. For he that speaks in a known language speaks not to man, but to God. For no man understands him, however, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Yes, you are speaking, somebody will not understand. I've seen this in my life. Sometimes I'm invited somewhere to minister or we go as a church to have tense meeting or other things to preach. And when we are doing it, there is a minister I want to talk to who has invited me. I will find myself, I'm speaking in tongues, yes, but he is understanding. And he's like, I didn't, what was that language you are saying? Because I got every word, but if you speak now, I cannot get it. It is a mystery. It is a mystery. One time, a very close person to me, uh, I spoke to them and I didn't know Luganda and I was speaking in Luganda. I didn't understand, but I was speaking in tongues, but I thought it is tongues, but it was a, a Ugandan language and we were with him. And after the meeting, I was seeing him writing and after he finished, he told me, "Did you have you ever gone to Uganda? By that time I hadn't gone and I said no. He didn't tell me anything, but do you know most of the things I spoke to him came to pass came to pass. I even spoke to him the day the father will go to rest. Yes, I didn't know, but it, it is not. So this is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Something just comes to you or a keyboard. Somebody is playing keyboard or guitar, you know, you know, and you will understand what they are saying, but it is not, you know, these are mysteries you cannot understand. For he that speaks in a known tongue, a known language speaks to the men, but to God, speaks not to men but to God for no man understands him however in the spirit he speaks mysteries you can be speaking in tongues ban tepo shati bada you are not understanding but in the spirit there is commotion commotion you speak the word of God you speak in tongues the word of God will command angels to do what the word of God is saying you will speak in tongues sometimes you cannot control yourself continue don't look at the clock there will be an answer. Amen. Number three, we have only two. Mysteries, speaking mysteries in the spirit. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. You speak mysteries in the spirit. So when you are anointed, you speak mysteries in the spirit. Amen. I realized there is a time I was doing deliverance. Not once, not twice have I seen this. And they speak in tongues. You speak in tongues. Even the devil has given his people a language that calls help. So you really have to discern who you have to discern these tongues. Even diviners, they speak in tongues. I hear them say, clear line, clear line, rabbi. <laughs> there is rabbi. 
even Christians, you can speak and you say, Rabbi. It doesn't mean you, you, you are diviner. No, Jesus is Rabbi, teacher. Sometimes I will speak in Arabic. I don't know. And my husband will tell me, do you know what you are speaking? I say, no, it is Arabic. You spoke Arabic, you know? And I'm like, oh. And the Lord, and in my spirit, I'm seeing things changing, but I'm not understanding. These are things that we need to make things to, to be straight. So speaking mysteries in the spirit. You see things, you speak things, you speak things in the spirit realm. Sometimes God will reveal to you something. You speak it out. People will say you are confused. You don't understand anything. But when it comes to pass, you are like, what? One time I was preaching somewhere and I said, do you come? And the lady came forward and I said, one, two, three, four. And the lady didn't believe it. Mm -mm. It was not even there. And before I finished the conference where I had gone, the lady comes and insists, I want to see the woman of God. I think I was in Karatina. And the woman of God comes and tells me, do you know what you said? It made no sense. But somebody came and confessed to me all what you said. And that is exactly what is happening. I said, wow, okay. Then we prayed. So there are things you will speak, people will not understand. But at the time, as time goes by, even there are people who leave church. For example, there is a man that came to church. This man was looking educative with the money, but he was... He was out of work. He was, you know, he was retrenched. He couldn't, he couldn't continue with the work. And I'm like, Safa Sunday, mm -mm, I'll not talk to him. This man doesn't look like he's poor. Second Sunday, the third Sunday, the Holy Spirit said, do you know you are making this man to suffer? Yet you have his word. Okay. I said then, come. The man comes and I say, right now you look like you have money. But in three months, you, you will be counting money like you know with a machine the man laughed i will never forget number one i was annoyed because it was mockery i yeah yeah i felt like slapping him i said why on earth did i even obey i said can i anoint your hands he said okay he just did like this i anointed his eyes and prayed the man did not come back to church <laughs> he said i've lied he said i'm a false prophet I don't know why people call me prophet, I'm apostle. Okay. He said one, two, three, four. He didn't come back. I saw him after three months climbing the stairs to the church. And I saw my husband, they laughed, they talked, they laughed. And I said, this man has come again. I was very annoyed. Then my husband comes and whispers and says, when I went to sit down, you know, the man has a testimony. I said, okay. So I invited him, he gave a testimony, and he said, number one, when your pastor called me, I felt he is fake, she's fake. Number two, I was retrenched, how do I count money? So this man gave us a testimony that he went for an interview. Somebody told him to go for an interview. No, he said that when I told him to, I anoint his hands, he said, mm, what will I lose? Just anoint. When he went for, somebody called him and said there are some interviews and he's like me, I can't go, I'm already retrenched by the government of Kenya. He said, you will lose nothing, just go. The man went for the interview, young men all over with the big, 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 big files. And this man had very few files, yet he had done PhD, but he had very few, few documents. When his time came, he was going back, the young men to go. Now, when he finished, when he went to for the interview he entered in the room for the interview now this interviewer this man you know this man that was interviewing him was showing him answers and he's like mm, am i the one copying so he would be asked a question he would stammer a little bit or take time but this man would show him the answer he would reply he would give the answers and say i didn't ask you so the man was employed by the government of kenya and the government of south sudan this, he, his transport, his everything, he's going to Sudan back. It was the government. There was heavy allowance, you know. Yes. So he, he just, so this is what I'm saying. Speaking mysteries in the spirit. You say something and people, finally, finally, sound production. You are every, uh, sound production. It is about sound production that nobody can resist. Luke 21, 15, that is, this one I will not explain. 
you will have a sound production that nobody can control. You speak, that's why we say, Lord, make my voice loud. You may not be known. You may have even two people, but your voice is loud. Amen. You say something, you are so, I've seen it in my life. We can go minister with many people on the altar. We minister. And when I go, I, I don't know what to say because these people, everybody is whoop, standing up, lifting up chairs. And I'm like, what will I give to these people? This is what the Lord gave to me. These ones are, you know, differently. But the moment I stand, my voice will be loud in the spirit realm. Amen, amen, amen. In your prayers is your voice known. It will only be known when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. We have something we call cords. We have cords. We have cords or passwords. There are people who call them passwords. Is your password known? Amen. Luke 21 and verses 15. And then we call it a day. Luke 21 and verses 15. These are people, things people will fight, but they are very real. The Bible says, verse 15, 21, 15, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries cannot be able to gainsay or resist. There are people in this county, they have spoken about me, they gossip about me, they talk bad about me. Of course, there are those who speak good about me. But when we meet with them, they greet me. Apostle, how are you? God bless you. They don't say what they are saying outside. And I'm like, if these people call me, I have the word. Every question they ask, it is in the Bible. Amen. So you are there, you are saying, woman of God, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Please repeat after me in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I come to you. I am asking you to write my name in the book of life. And from today, I trust in you and I believe in you and I'm your daughter your son. Congratulations. That is the biggest, biggest, biggest grace that you can ever receive of salvation. And that is a big step that you have taken and God will help you. Time to give. Please use the number on the screen. There is the cooperative account. There is the m -Pesa, the number that is on the screen. Use it to give your offering, your tithes, your Oracle television program uh, partnership. There is the sacrifice. Whatever the Lord has led you to give, that is the only way you can connect to this grace. That is the only way you can connect to this grace. As a member, always watch me, listen to me, and prepare a seed. Prepare a sacrifice. Pay your tithe, because tithe is what connects you to somebody. Sacrifice fights battles. Love offering is to say, woman of God, you are a blessing to me. This is my love gift to you. There is the Oracle television. You can say every month I will be sending you a thousand shillings to contribute towards the Oracle. Or woman of God, I will be catering for the Oracle television program that comes on Monday, 7 o'clock and 30 minutes so that God can bless me as you minister. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for your people. I want to soak them in the blood of Jesus this week. I pray that the masses of God in the month of July shall be upon their lives. Wickedness will not come near their tents. And I stand with the word of God, O oh God, that you are going to show them mercy. In Psalms 136 and verses 4, the Bible is talking to us that, that you are the one that does great and wonders and your mercies and you are it forevermore. I am praying that Psalms 136, and verses 6 will be your portion as I read it. The Bible says in Psalms 136 and verses 4, To him who alone does, uh, does great wonders for his mercies and to earth forevermore. May God in this commission do great wonders in your lives. May he surprise you with many surprises. May he frustrate your enemies. May he meet your needs. And may he shower you with his blessings and give a testimony to the glory of God. Always remember that where there is a prophet, there is a testimony. And by the hand of Apostle Damaris, signs and wonders and miracles are your portion today. God bless you. Preach peace, minister peace, and keep peace in the nation of Kenya. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.